jungle. He's just, I would say, the epitome of a stable offlaner. You know, he, he just always gets something going. And then you get one decent combo, maybe you land a vac into a Nick stun, maybe you don't. But even without having a stun on it, you still have Queen of Pain. So there's still some synergy with the vacuum you can play around. Right. I think the main reason is like they didn't have a mech carrier, and they didn't have any hero that was going to be able to constantly push out lanes. Life Stealer is not so hot at it. Which Witch Doctor and Nyx are pretty much the same. Queen's okay, uh, but I think that newbie are more prone to wanting to fight. So they just want something that's going to be able to keep the lanes out that they don't have to like fully commit to all the time. I think so. It kind of it does pretty much all that, right? Yeah. And and a hero that does similar is is uh of course the Tidehunter, which was banned out of the game. So I thought maybe, you know, they would want to go for the Tide usually because that's a hero that KP often picks, or rather has picked for him. And I think it's a pretty amazing hero. But they instead have to go for the uh, Dark Chair because again that Tidehunter was banned out. So something to keep in mind. But Tide is super good against Troll. Because Troll really is all about the fast hits. So if you reduce the damage by a percentage, and then you also have uh, a Ravage on top of that, mm. and Kraken, it's very hard to stop a Tide from getting an ult off in a team fight. And if you look at the way the MP want to take engagements, they're pretty all in. You know, they, they throw the hook, they drop the rock, they're committed. They want, they want that fight to go favorably for them, and Tide is just so good against lineups like that. But instead, we will have to bear witness to the Dark Seer. But uh, a lot of good heroes, uh, a lot of comfort heroes, I should say these squads i think the biggest one being the enchantress as we've talked about numerous times the sccc quap another one that you need to keep in mind so again a couple of heroes that i i think people are pretty comfortable with in this game all right okay we're gonna jump in a couple of tps pilot i will head into that top river area just drop an award np already very fast for the reward placements and no counter tps from newbie they don't really want to deal with the uh, ward pressure right now. They're just going to kind of walk out and do their own thing together. They're going to head mid for now with Kaka, SCCC, and Faith. And uh, All right, let's see how these lanes are shaped up. As expected, Fata should be going mid. The troll for Envy looking like he might go top, and they're going to send MSS down bottom alone on this clockwork for now. So they're kind of switching it up and... Going a little bit more aggro, I suppose, for, for MP side in the top lane. Life Stealer will kind of struggle against this. If it's if it's Pi and Envy, I don't think that they're going to be able to do anything but commit another support if they want Mugi to farm, or their other option is, I guess, you just rotate somewhere else and hope to pull NP to that lane. So if it's Troll plus the Warlock, yeah, I think that Mugi struggles there. Well, we're going to find out. It's not going to be easy, potentially. KP trying to steal the uh, zero minute bounty rune, but MSS coming up. And uh, again, this guy's a pretty good clockwork player, and he's had a really great series. I mean, the first game was a little bit rough, but every other game since then has been pretty spot on. Even last game, despite losing, they did pretty well. So, there we go. This is one of the age old matchups, right? The clockwork versus DS, the 1v1. Yeah. This, yeah. this goes back to like TI3. This is a very old matchup. Well, just kidding. <laughs> See you later. Oh, he bails. Dude. Yeah. He's out of there. He bailed they, instantly. Uh, are, they saw MSS, so they know that it's going to be an aggro lane, so they don't want their life stealer to be there. So their reaction is going to be just to dodge the lane. It'll take, uh, they'll miss a wave of experience from Oogie, a wave of experience in last hits, but no big deal. I think it's more important that you keep your life stealer safe in the beginning of the game. Meantime, Fox will take a Shadow Strike mid with a couple of heroes nearby. Kaka on the NX Assassin with a uh, Smoke of Deceit pops down an Observer Ward to scatter AUI 2000 and his jungling patterns. And for now, Kaka will probably just lose experience and throw out a couple of mana burns here and there. This will be much more favorable to what the newbie want out of their laning phase. Mugi will be able to more or less free farm. He's going to have the Witch Doctor down there. And in the meantime, Kaka is just going to be annoying Aoi, just scouting out any movement that there could be. Hmm. Okay. So now you have this dual lane you're up against for KP. I mean, I'm assuming you should still get plenty of farm. But it might be tough until he gets a couple more levels of Iron Chill. I don't know. He's kind of getting zoned by Pilot Die, but again, it's a Darks here, so he shouldn't have too much trouble up here. It's just about getting to the Soul Ring. So he started with a lot of regen. The real question is is that one Iron Shell going to give him enough money to get his full Soul Ring? Because if the answer is no, then yeah, he's going to have some issues. He might have to use the Mango just to 
continually cast the spell to push out the wave. Because the best case for him is like push out the wave, Pylai die, falls back, and then you can get a pull off or something. That would help him a lot. But I don't think Pi is going to let him do that. He's just going to follow him to the pull camp. Yeah. Yep. You can see KP is like sitting over there for it. He's actually just going to go to the rune now that he sees Pylai die chasing him. He's like, ah, it's not going to be. This. It's not going to be great. Yeah, these landings stage four do be kind of interesting. Fata taking a fair bit of right-click damage from S triple C. In the meantime, he's going to blink forward. Shadow Strike, the Fairy Fire is there. Shouldn't be enough to get the kill. He also has a salve. Good attempt coming in from S triple C. Just keeping the pressure on, but zoning back Fata means he has to go heal. He will have a salve, and he should use it. It's going to get ticked down, but he'll survive at the very least. Very close there. Fata is going to make it back home alive. But again, no shrines, so he has to go all the way back home. So pretty good stuff. Meanwhile, they have the center cockroach stomp down bottom. Cast come through. They have the cogs to come out as well, but they don't actually hit him to faith in terms of locking him in. AUI 2000 still chasing. Really wants his kill. Faith gonna try to get out. He has a TP scroll. I don't even know if he needs to use it. It was a pretty great juke into the tree line. He's just gone. See you later. Nice play coming in from uh that squad. He had the boots on the quick buy. Just picked him up as he walked past the side shop, so he was able to easily juke there. AUI just trying to do what he can, though, to influence the lanes. He wants MSS to get something. You know, at the very least, get uh, get a finished pair of boots and then get level 6, potentially move around the map and, and make something happen. Uh, I mean, I know it's early, man, but it's hard to overcome the advantage you had last game as AUI where you're just like, okay, well, I found the courier, I found a kill top lane, first blood and stuff like that. It's just not the same start, and I, I know it's not the same game either, but it's just kind of interesting to see how the game's uh, a bit different in this one. It's, like you said, though, it's hard to top the performance that he had. Like, right. he did everything in the early game. Yeah, that's each group. This time around, it's, it's, it's more just a matter of how the lanes were and how easy it was to dive the mag and how difficult it is to dive a Darkseer. Yep. And we talk about, you know, KP, but he's still struggling, right? He's only level two. It's almost four minutes in. I mean, he's he'll rocking. get some space, maybe, but you're right. This is not an easy lane for him as of right now. More lane access to go. He does have Surge. Pilot Eye coming in. They're just really trying to bait the Surge out as best as possible, but it's not going to happen. Kaka does pick up that Bounty Rune, and Fata was really just trying to get some extra gold. Also, Mana Burn. Meanwhile, top rune spot, there is a regen rune for S Triple C as he has a Haste Rune coming out next. And I think uh, Fata's like, yeah, I don't want anything to do with that. Let me get out of here. This lane is completely destroyed in Dude, favor of newbie. I actually did not see how bad it was. It's really bad. My God, is S Triple C really gonna quap? Jeez. Well, the the Nyx also went mid once or twice and just yeah. threw out some spells. True. So it's it's not really just him. And since AUI can't really go mid, that's one lane he really can't influence that much unless he just gets like a wildkin or something and tornadoes or some random stuff like that. It's it's pretty difficult. I think for for him to do something there so he's more just trying to stop you know moogie from getting whatever out of the bottom lane and making sure that there's not going to be any rotations towards mid so even though fata you know he hasn't died okay he might die now oh that cast oh the sonic wave see ya s triple c showing his stuff yet again in this mid lane on the queen of pain as he's done many times before first blood secured and a very good start to newbie in both this mid and bottom lane We'll see if he can keep it up and help out top lane as well at some point in the near future for Darkseer. I do not think I've ever seen a Darkseer with only four creep kills in five minutes. It's a little weird, for sure. It's a little weird I, to I see. really don't... I, I don't think I've ever seen a DS that... He had as much CS as the Warlock. <laughs> it's frightening, but the thing is, he gets level three Iron Shell. He could also head into the jungle. He'll get some more last hits. It's going to take a bit, but he's, he's fine. He's got level four now. He's good to go. He's in. Well, searing chains to come out. Here comes the Centaur Conqueror, SCCC. Gotta get out with a blink. Nicely done. Pops the regen rune. They are putting pressure on this tier 1 tower, but again, it's gonna be a bit difficult. Screaming Pain to fly out. They really want to try to push this out. Get the tier 1 tower, but it is double siege creep. That is the uh, disconcerting thing for newbie. Let's see if he can't defend this. Oh my god, that damage is insane. This is just gonna be in deny range. Dude, the Siege Creep is ownage. Deny. Nice. But that's still nuts. Like, all it takes is that double Siege Creep coming in from AUR2000, and the tower just goes down in one fell swoop. It's so crazy. That is pretty ridiculous, to be honest. I don't know. Oh, uh, okay, Faith. I think he's just dead. Uh, oh, nice blink. I, I think MSS might be dead now, to be honest. He's trying to turn on Faith. It's not going to work out. 
S Triple C has gotten like the best runes, to be honest with you. It's kind of he gets nice. a regen and then a haste. I mean, to, I don't think that he needed the haste to be able to get into the cogs there, but it was uh, certainly nice. Is Fata dead again? He has another blank. Tread swap. Oh God, he. Oh, he's thinking is he about not it. going for it? I'm surprised. If he was gonna go in, he'd have to like pop a salve and like heal up to full or whatever. If he was gonna dive that, it's also taking a while. Which the longer it takes, the the more likelihood there is of a TP response. So it just makes it more risky. If you're gonna go for a play like that, I think you want to go for it immediately and not hesitate. Dear God, Dark Series TPing back to land after like leaving. What? He's got eight CS now. Dude, he is below the Nyx and the Witch Doctor, and somehow Dude, he still has a 1500 net worth advantage. Envy's got 25 denies, man. He's just he's on his deny game. I guess so. Battle Trance to come through. Clears out the Iron Shield. Creeps pretty quickly. Shadow Walk is there. MS is walking around for the behind. It's level 5. No level 6, so no hook shot. Now, Newbie kind of caught on an island here in this top lane. Battery Salt, Cog Push, Surge through, and KP should be fine. Can they chase after anybody? And here's the uh, Cask and the Maledict. And again, Faith, they missed the Impale. Can they chase any further? No. Without that Impale, they can't go any further to find a kill. So they will push them back at the very least and hopefully get some farm for KP who could desperately need it. In the mid time, uh, you're going to see some farm at least for Fata now. So he's got to try to catch back up. He's got 23 CS at 8 minutes. That is an absolute wrecking. I don't know. This is like some of the lowest CS I've seen on some respective heroes in a very, very long time. Like, the DS's farm, I guess, is a little bit more understandable because he's against a dual lane. But Fata only having, like, 23 CS at 8 minutes, that is not good. Dude, the net worth... Uh, you, you need MSS to do some heavy lifting. The net worth chart is awkward. It's like three heroes at, like, 1,800. <laughs> and then somehow, again, newbie still have, like, a 2.4k net worth advantage. It's so weird. This queen is, like, all of their net worth yeah, advantage. Yeah, it's a significant amount. Envy's gonna get chunked down by Moogie. Gotta go for the battle trance, and Faith has been like owning with these kills. Cask Maledict, we see it again. It's just so strong right now for Faith. Always in the right place at the right time. Newbie supports, man. They're everywhere. Yeah. Like between Kaka and Faith, they, they've done a tremendous amount of work in the series. I just feel like there should be at least one other person on NP having a you know a pretty good time, and sure. Envy is the highest farm on his team. But that's also not saying that much because the rest of his team is not getting any farm. Right. Like mid is getting shut down. The safe lane was MSS versus a, a life stealer, which is not really the best matchup for a clockwork. And I, even with all that, like Moogie's still ahead of the troll. And S Triple C is doubling. No, he's more than double the net worth of Fata right now. He's got a full veil compared to Fata's what? Uh brown boots and Bottle, poor man's shield. So, yeah. It's a bit more. S Triple C is an ownage quap player, and he continues to show it here in Zotac. Game number, I believe, four. So, again, we are potentially. I mean, if, if Newbie continue this, this could just be a 3 1 victory for them. NP are going to have to find some room to get this farm up. I mean, like we talked about, this Ember Spirit needs time. I mean, uh, AUI 2000's rotations have not been super successful. They will try to push into the tier 1 tower top lane and probably get this tower too. And again, they're getting all this, like, this, all this advantage from Newbie is going to be with, like, a tower gone mid. Now they're trying to find Kaka. He does uh, have Spike Carapace. Now KP coming in as well. Fata might consider diving, but decides against it. Envy's nearby. Faith, of course, also with an Invis rune. Thought about going with the Cask and Maledict. He's not quite level 6. There it goes. They're trying to find Envy. Maledict dropped down. The Infest Bomb's going to come out. There's the Battle Trance. The Shadow Word to come through. And Envy is getting destroyed. Fata needs to be careful. He will have that remnant out. Is he going to make it away? They needed an Impale or something to find Fata. But he's probably going to be okay. And he even finds that uh, Bounty Rune for good measure. In the meantime, AUI 2000 split pushing forces up the cliff top lane. But again, Envy dies one more time. And I believe it was... Uh, who got the kill? Triple S, Triple C. So, yeah. Cool. He's got the double catapult thing going top as well. So he's going to get a, a decent amount of damage on the tier 2. And NP are making movements, right? They're, they're getting some objectives. It's just ridiculous to see how far this queen is. My Jesus. Like, at this rate, he's going to have, like, a completed orchid on top of the veil before Fata has anything a completed item. Like, I I'm talking, like, a real item, not, like, wand and stuff like that. But yeah. 
It's frightening for sure. And um Well the good news for NP is they get that kill on the on the quap and all of a sudden that that pinata kinda comes flowing out and get a little bit more gold going to the rest of your team for NP. Just need something. They do have good heroes at killing queen, that is a very good uh a good point. And plus now they have rock. So between the hookshot, between having the chaotic offering, they can potentially go for these fights. Looks like Owie could be in some trouble here. Kaka scouting it out. Mm, cast. Vendetta. Pale. Do they have enough damage? With Maldic. Oh, yeah, they do. Oh, my God. Nature's attendance. No way. Kaka even gets the last little right click off. Even with the untouchable on. So much damage from this Witch Doctor. This Witch Doctor, how many is this? It's 1-1-4. One, one, it feels like he's done more in this game than that, but I guess there's only been five kills, so he's actually yeah, involved in say. all five kills. I just realized. That's pretty funny. <laughs> he's always there. I really like the Max Maldict build because it, it turns him into more of a damage hero than what people normally pick him for, which is the sustain of having things like Voodoo Restoration. Right. And plus, it's just a natural counter to Enchantress anyway, and CM was banned. So just a, a really solid addition. And plus you have such great burst between like the queen blinking in, throwing out Scream and a Sonic Wave. If you have a Maledict on that hero and they eat those spells, if they're not like TPing to base or BKBing or something, you're pretty much just dead. Right. True. Alright, arm lit up for Moogie. Uh, SMY is going to be his choice for his next item. KP starting to find some farm. In the meantime, Vendetta coming out mid lane as Kaka is looking for Fata. Spike Carapace can keep him locked down. We'll see if it's going to be the case. Oof. No. He didn't early. care this. Yeah, he needed yeah. to. He went for the Vendetta instead. Meanwhile, top lane, Golem dropped down. Moogie's going to infest inside of a creep and just run. And the uh, Golem's trying to buy the block will not be successful. So Golem dropped for nothing, I guess. How unfortunate. That is some um, depressing thing to watch. He might just come out and kill the Golem or go back in. Yeah, Faith is in there. While I die, the cask bounce is there. Maledict has been used. Well, I die taking a fair bit of damage, but they cannot quite chase him down. Shadow Word to come through as well. And, uh, yep, Golem. See you later. Give me that gold. Oof. Not a good sign when you drop a Golem with three heroes on a core and you can't kill the core. It's not, uh, not a good thing. The Life Stealer does pretty much own four of their heroes. The, the only one that it, it doesn't do exceptionally well against is Troll. And even though you can't really kill Ember, the Ember can't kill you either. So you, you kind of just exist. I don't know. It, it's seeming like NP have a lot of issues this game. It's, it's not even like they just lost the lanes. It's that taking the team fight's going to be hard in of itself. You can't get a solo kill on a, a hero by dropping Chaotic Offering. You're yeah. not pressuring the tower with it. It just dies. You're just feeding away the gold and the XP. It's, I mean, it's very, very rough at the moment. You've got some issues if that's the case. And uh, as you mentioned, this orchid's going to be up pretty soon for Quat. In the meantime, bottom, Impetus going into KP. This guy's starting to get some room to farm. He's actually almost caught up to AUI. Meanwhile, the Impale mid. The Warlock, I believe, is absolutely 100% dead. As Triple C will find a dominating spree and continues on his path of a rampage, pretty much. And just destroying everybody in this game. Faith now getting chased down by Fata. He's trying to find anything. Faith is like, I have... Ulti, I have already used cask, but bottom lane. All right, here we go. TP's coming in. So they can't find somebody. The infest out. AUI 2000 looking to try to get away here. He does have a TP scroll. Uh, they have vacuum, though. And the surge, the open wounds. AUI 2000 is absolutely done. Moogie will get the kill. So, okay. More kills going to newbie. <laughs> the real question is, what is NP's counterplay to this? Like, what what is their comeback mechanism? Because a lot of their damage is magical. They're waiting for NP to get items to really be able to kind of turn the pace of the game. You know, that terrifying BKB troll warlord, you know, hitting people and being super scary. Problem is, the game pace is too fast for that. He's not going to have time to farm his items. Newbie are just assuming their jungle right now. And then this is one of the few games where even though the MP are split up, they're not able to really pressure the towers that consistently. They're just being found out. They're getting picked off before they're able to get to the places on the map they want to be. Mm. And Newbie are just getting all the objectives. Like right now they're pushing say, into the tier two. The I tier like, one mid's going to be free almost. Yeah, that's true. I like the uh, the choice for Envy to go for the Mask of Madness. I think that's an item you need when you're down this far. And they're going to head to Roche, a, and I think they this can is get Yolo. this. I mean, they have to do something, and I don't know that Newbie knows this is happening. Like, oh, oh, they definitely do. They definitely do now. 
And uh, this is problematic. Fada is going to walk up. All right, let's be careful here. Let's see if NP can't turn this around. Hookshot's going to go through. They're going to find Faith. They need to bring him down. The Ips is going to work, and he's in trouble. And Will Yule's up. This uh, Fata Ember is going to try to chase after the Wild Wing. Okay. Nature's Attendance coming out. Faith back up in 18 seconds. If they can hold them off for that amount of time, they're fine. Life Stealer continues to check inside the Roche Pit just to make sure there's nobody in there. In the meantime, heading up top is going to be S Triple C. Really wants to sort it. It's flying out right now. They're going to maybe go for another fight. Vendetta. They will see him. There are sentries down. They've got the Iron Shell up on the Wild Wing. This is actually pretty hilarious. Impetus coming through. They really want to bring this down, and they will. Now Fox coming in. Sled if his Searing Chain's on to two. Maybe in trouble. A lot of damage coming in. Faith. Cask will go through. Can they find any further follow-up damage or lockdown? Again, they have the Orchid as Triple C thinking about going in. But there is a Yule Scepter for Fata and Envy going to work. This is actually a serious amount of damage. They have the Golem, but not enough mana to use. Now they do. I don't know. All of a sudden, newbie, I don't. They're, they're taking a lot of damage here just from like Fatal Bonds alone. MSS is going to walk up Cogs. They're going to be there. No Cog push. Here's the Battle Trance. Meanwhile, Pilot Eye gets the kill on Kaka. And this is going to be taken down. They're going to try to find more. Faith is going to get caught out. The Remnant through, and he's going to get caught again. Two dead. They get Roche. Huge stuff. In the meantime, Tier 3 Tower getting assaulted, but that is that's something. NP needed something, anything, and they get it. I, I don't even understand how they're able to get that. That that should not happen. I don't know. That was the, the beginning of the fight, because it lasted quite a while. They get the hook shot onto the Witch Doctor, which is a really big kill. Getting rid of the Maledict and getting rid of the, the chance for a Death Ward, like just being channeled into the pit, is a very, very big win for NP. They go around, they get to the Shrine, they go back in, they get the they re-engage, and the Fatal Bonds just forces Mugi out. Like, they're just hitting Roshan, and Mugi's like almost dying to this, and he has to go back to the jungle and start hitting creeps. So, I... I did not think they would be able to get away with that, but at the end of it, they did. So I guess a, a breath of life here for NP and, and very much needed. Yeah. It doesn't really solve the net worth problem, but well, it take gives it one them step some at a time. time, Andy. One step at a time. Well, TP, and he's fine. No impale. Oh, he canceled it. That's awkward. Oh, wowie. Rough stuff. And as you mentioned, this tier one tower might be free. We'll see. He's gonna go Halberd That's for Mugi, the weird by thing. the way. Yeah, it's it's the ultimate troll counter. Especially when you know he's not gonna be going for BKB anytime soon. Like if he goes Mask of Madness right into BKB, he's not really gonna do that much damage, which makes it kinda tough. He also will take a lot of damage too from the uh Mask of Madness itself. Arm reduction. Yeah, he is going uh, Mask of Madness BKB, which I find kind of interesting, but I guess he has it's, to. Yeah, he kind of needs to, but it's just the... He's relying on more damage from the Fatal Bonds. They they still have Enchantress. They still have Ember. So it's not like the rest of the team is not going to do damage. It's like he's not going to do damage, which is right. fine as long as he can stay alive. All right. I mean, if they can just Fatal Bonds Roshan again and get some newbie members caught in it, it'll be good to go. That's it. Just bait the Roshans. Ma, that's all you gotta do. I guess they just have to wait the next uh, next Roche in like another what eight minutes, something like that. Some ridiculous. I don't know. Yeah, minutes. it's anywhere from eight and a, or five and a half to eight and a half. Yeah. I think. So we'll wait and see. But again, they still have Aegis. It's still pretty early on right now. I guess uh, newbie will just probably be okay continuing to farm. They don't want to push into Aegis. Try to give anything away too quickly to NP. Um, just continue to farm up. Any other big items coming out? We already talked about the Halberd, obviously. We have talked about the Orchid. Now a BKB for S -tri S Triple C. Uh, four staff for Kaka. And then Faith already has Medallion Urn, which is pretty damn good, I would say. But here we go. Smoke of Deceit Gang coming in. They'll find the Queen of Pain. He's in some trouble. Triple Remnant. The Golem dropped down. What a turn. S Triple C will stay alive for now, but the negative Urn charge should take him down. We shall see if that's going to be the case. He's going to drop maybe. Can he get to the shrine? He drops right underneath the tier 3 tower. Just like that, they turn it around. It's a mega kill spree that goes to MSS as he picks up the kill himself. Oh, boy. Here we go. NP are not done yet. The Veil regen almost made him live there. Are they really going to be able to get high ground damage here? There's no queen for 30 seconds. Even so. We'll see. 
Let's come through. Remnant in. They're looking for Kaka. Spike Carapace. There's the cast coming in. They find the uh, Death Ward as well. You also can come out. MSS pops the blade mail. They're going to push back now. Bata may be in trouble here. He's not careful. They will blow up Kaka though with the... Oh, good vacuum, but no wall combo coming in. The Impet is still doing work. He's inside the Siege Creep right now, and Fox is still going on to this tower, the Tier 3, taking a lot of hits, and all of a sudden, what was once like a 5,000 net worth advantage is down to about 2,000 for Newbie. They will hold on, but again, with the Queen now just respawning, and people back up. This is starting to look a little bit dangerous here for Newbie in game number 4. Yeah, and Envy, I think you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but he's not going the BKB. He is going to go for the SMY first. Yep. That's one of those decisions that you make in the middle of the game where you're like, oh man, we're getting trounced. I need to buy BKB. And then you win a fight and you're like, ah, oh, screw that. I'm buying another item. I'll buy BKB later. Yeah. Which I, I think, think everyone's experienced that. I mean, and to be fair, as you mentioned earlier, he needed the damage, so. Among other things. But. Well, I mean, despite losing the co-op, she's still the highest net worth hero in the game. A BKB here would be gigantic. Should probably just farm that up real quick. Once that's up, newbie can maybe think about taking a fight, or they might just smoke up right now. We'll see. Uh, I thought they were going to, but I guess not. They didn't have one. Stay together. I still think that fighting in the 5v5 of newbie is... It's doable when you have chaotic offering, you know? You got this Fatal Bonds, he's maxed it out. You get one good rock into Fatal Bonds and Ember damage on top of that. That's, that is insane how much DPS you can output in the fight. I think after the last couple of games, as we see as Triple C secure the last hit on the Tier 1, that NP realized that they have to be able to fight at least a little bit in a bigger scale. They can't just always take skirmishes, you know? They're, like Newbie are forcing them into these situations where they need to be able to 5-man to a certain degree. And the Warlock kind of alleviates a lot of those problems. Yeah, it's... The counter initiation, the initiation follow-up for Pylai Die. I mean... That goal, that was the biggest thing around that Roche pit was the golem and... Well, not the golem, the uh, Fatal Bonds, excuse me, was, was actually pretty problematic, but... Uh, EUI, hey buddy. Fine. He's fine, I think. Dude, that hero is so fast. Yeah, the move speed of the Enchantress with Drum is pretty good. Going for the TP, and he's gone. See you later. Nice, good juke. A little bit of time wasted from Newbie. They've sort of gained a little bit of their gold back after uh, that, that rough fight where they lost two heroes. But again, now Golem is back up, and this is what did the damage last time around. At least the team fight over towards mid. The golem stun is really nice too because it, it can line up a hook, it can line up some remnants. Oh, Moogie is a little bit out of position he is here. Way out of position. The remnant coming through. He's in trouble. He's gonna get dropped. Down for 48 seconds. Newbie getting caught again. Bad positioning from this life stealer. Okay, NP continue to climb their way back into this game. I don't know, man. It's getting rough. How does it's really weird to get picked off like that. I mean, you have deep wards on NP side of the map. You see no one, and you're farming the woods, and your team's like uh, anywhere near you. It's really actually kind of uncommon for a player like Moogie to get caught like that. Down for 15 seconds. A couple more items coming out. Again, there is still that net worth advantage, mo the majority of which is from the Queen of Pain, as she has her now full BKB and working on the Assault Kuros. And, uh... Well, as expected, Darkseer has passed AUI 2000 and then some is now almost tied with MSS on the clockwork. Looking for a four staff, went for the pipe first, which makes some sense. 25 minutes. It's in. a pretty darn good pipe game. Let's be honest. I would say so. Just for Ember alone, you kind of, you want a pipe and then you have Warlock on top of that. So it's okay against clock, but I guess in a, in a perfect world, you would just buy a four staff first to save yourself or save, you know, whoever gets uh, hit by a hook. But they do have one on Kaka anyway. So it's not even as if he absolutely needed it. Everybody on the high ground here for NP, but backing up is going to be the rest of Newbie. They'll drop a ward or two down. In the meantime, they'll just take back over their own jungle. Roche is up in two minutes. I don't know, for Newbie, do you wait for it, man? I think they kind of have to wait. This is one of those games where you're going to need Aegis and I guess now Cheese, since it's going to be Roshan number two. Mm -hmm. But you're going to need those to be able to really turn the tides of the fight in your favor. It's a very, very even game at this point. The big standout, obviously, has been the Queen of Fame of Newbie. He is five, or sorry, 4K net worth above the next highest person in the game. 
That is nuts. He is a like full item head. Orchid and Kale coming through. This is going to be fought to dead. Sonic Wave back wall even dropped to get that kill. Perfect timing. Well, it would be if Rose was up a little bit sooner, but it's again, it's still a minute and a half before it is. But they can take the tier two at least. Or attempt two. They'll get some good damage on it. I don't think they're going to be able to force a buyback out of Fata for just a tier two. Especially considering both teams are going to be aware that Roshan's spawning. Could be anywhere for, you know, their perspective, it could be one to two minutes. But that's pretty much the, the absolute longest. But yeah, there's going to be a free tower here for Newbie. They're just going to back up and wait it out. They still have good vision in the area. So if it's not a smoke, they'll be able to scout out MP. Do they have one right now? They should, yeah. Okay, they do have one on uh, Pi. So that's going to be the next point of contention here, is going to be Roshan. Yeah, and we're probably going to see a big fight around it too. But uh, it's not up yet. And uh, we'll see if a team smokes too early. What happens next? I guess you could get a creep for AUI 2000 and send it into the bed. Or I guess you have Flare too for Clockwork as well. Yep, Plenty he's been spam flaring it. It's really actually newbie that need the help looking to get into Roche. In terms of seeing it. Faith is gonna have a solar crest and like 100 gold. Here we go, though. Smoke and Seat Gang coming again. S Triple C is about to get caught. Blinks away. They have hook shot, but he does have BKB. So going on him is maybe not the best idea. All right. And now Roche is about to respawn six seconds from now. Illusion's coming through. Let's just get some vision coming in. It's a vendetta, I believe, or is it a full smoke? Looks like it's a full smoke. As Triple C is going to push out mid. He's working out of Shiva's guard, and they've changed. Meanwhile, up towards the top area of the map, they're just not with everybody. Kaka's going to get dropped down, it looks like, and maybe KP will be next. That was a bit awkward. I don't know why they went alone. Kaka was there, like, that all on his own. Some. They weren't expecting sentries to be down or something? I'm not sure. Because they had a ward, like they had an OBS and a sentry, and Kaka walked right into it. And I guess the rest of the team wanted to wrap around from behind. Mm -hmm. So they just got caught out a little bit before everyone was fully in position to take that. So they lose the Nyx. It's not, I think, enough for NP to feel comfortable just walking into the Roshan pit, especially since the Queen's here with the 10 second BKB and a Life Stealer inside. I mean, I guess they're going to try for it, but that Nyx is going to be up in 15 seconds, and he also has a TP, so he can get to the shrine relatively fast. And they have the Infest Bomb ready. Pilot out looking to counter initiate with the Golem. They should have the hookshot as well. Coming in, vacuum wall combination. They need to pass. He's going to go into MSS and he'll keep him locked down. Meanwhile, BKB's pop. They really want this Enchantress. And they will find it. Golem dropped down, but the Blink is out in time. Buyback coming in from the Enchantress. Now KP getting turned on. Forced away the Bash, the Whirling Axes, the Ranged Axes. The Voodoo Restoration is not enough on the back side of the fight. Yule Sips are coming in. SCC and Mugi are kind of separated. They're trying to man fight this right now. They need help. Vendetta Impale grabs the kill. Now they find the Impale again onto AUI 2000. They want more damage coming in. SCC, Shadow Strike going through. Envig doing some work. He's got the Mask Madness pop. Here comes the Ancient Thunderhide. Trying to chase after AUI 2000. The open wounds. The huge come in coming from SCC. Throws up that Orc of Malevolence. Gets the kill. Nicely done. And they're going to head into the Roche Pin trying to finish this off. Should be easy rush at that point. I guess MSS could go for a steal or something. He's up in about two seconds. Maybe he goes for the YOLO play. Throws a flare into the pit, you know? A little, little cheeky clockwork action, perhaps, Mott? Yeah, we're going to see. Envy's coming with the rolling axes. They don't have Fatsa for 13 seconds. Pilot out is enough goal, and he already dropped it in the Dude, last the fight. Fatal Bonds. Fatal Bonds is owning them right now. It's so much damage. They've got to be careful. They need to back up and shrine, and that's exactly what they're going to do. That is insane. Oh my god, these bonds from Pilai Die. Envy going right in, they want to finish, here comes KP. Looking for the vacuum, Cog pushes there, the BKB. They want to finish this, the bash is up though on Envy. And KP, he might fall, but will he get this Roshan? He's trying to finish it. Envy's BKB is done, Fata's back in, he's orchid it up. Hook shot to come through, that'll stop Mugi. They use the upheaval, Pilai Die in some trouble. Sonic Wave, onto two, Pilai Die will fall, the Impale. Remnant forward, Fata trying to man fight here. Mugi's still at half HP, now AUI to that on the back lines, getting caught. More damage from SCC, running low on mana, and the Shrine to come through. They're diving up the high ground. MSS gets Faith, and they will get Kaka as well. The Orchid is there. They need the kill. The Untouchable doing some serious work. They get Roche. They get the Aegis on the back lines, and the Cheese. Why were you chasing, newbie? That's not the play. Now they'll find the Yule Scepter. Not much mana left for SCC. They burn all the rest of it. He cannot blink out now. 
The Infest out coming through. Moogie's going to try to man fight at least Fata, but he's running. And SCC is going to fall. Moogie is now the sole survivor. He's going to go for the TP. Will he be successful? The battle trips. The oh bashes are there. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Oh, my God. You've got to be kidding. So, Fatal Bonds just literally stopped them from doing Roshan by itself. Yep. Pretty much. And I guess a flare, too. Yep. And they chased Aoi for so long that they were able to just walk three heroes in the pit and kill Roshan. That was like, some clowny stuff. That was a gigantic blunder from Newbie. Like, just enormous. Oh, man. I feel like they have it and they keep throwing it. But there's the cast, the wall, the impale. But where's the follow-up damage? The Maldic, the death ward. Golem dropped down, though, and that'll be the end of the fight already. Newbie have to back up. The dust is gone. MSS, the battery assault coming through. He will back away. The tier 3 tower already done. KP trying to run and making it away, but the slide of fist brings him down. The glyph is there. S triple C is up in 8 seconds. Envy going to work on the range racks. The impale will miss. They need to lead. They walk through the wall. Slows them down. Maledict will miss there as well. Faith walking out and NP are going to make it away. Pretty much scot free. Although, uh, well, I will definitely. Well, Pilot Eye is going to, yeah, he's He's going to exit for a little while. He was just channeling the upheaval, no style points. Got to get your team out in fashion. But I, I do think that they can't afford to do that again. Like, honestly, the later the game gets, the troll having a BKB, making his way towards another item. Envy has 4,400 gold. Well, he just spent some of it. I think he finished the, uh, the SNY. Yep, he did. So now he's going to be able to make his way into potentially another damage item. This is a stage in the game where it starts to get really scary for Nubi. Because they're deal having to deal with this troll where they we talked about they don't really have a lot of answers to. It's more just they were going to play a faster paced game and stop Envy from getting to this item progression now to where he's like hitting this critical mass. I don't know, man. That Roshan was like... I haven't seen anything that clowny in a while. This Warlock pick is just holding the line for them. And it's not just that. It's the first Roshan as well. I feel like Newbie making a few too many mistakes. Like you mentioned, they, they were so far up. I don't, I don't, that, they could have stopped Troll from getting to that point, but again, MP have the answers with the Warlock, even like AUI 2000 is dying in a lot of these fights, he's not dishing out the damage, but they just have enough sustain, these fights go on long enough for MP that they can do the job. Kaka is going to walk up, and they'll try to find somebody here, Courier is going to be taken down at the very least, which is nice. Hookshot comes in from MSS onto the Prowler Shaman, which we didn't see, lucky for him, and uh... To be fair, those Prowler Shaman had it coming. Those creeps are I hate those jerks. Things. They're annoying. Infinite regen, root, reduce your base armor by half. Yeah, not fun. That is an OS frog camp. Well, at least they don't have magic resistance. So there's that. It's the little things. All right, here we well, go. Well, this is an open set of racks top. Yeah. So this is going to be tough to defend. And with an Aegis and BKB for Envy. And vacuum back. Doing some serious work, cast coming through, good force away from that Impale. If that Impale hits, then that Aegis is probably gone. Still might be. The Orca comes out, and uh, he really wants his range racks, and he's going to waste his Aegis for it. I shouldn't say waste. He gets the actual building down, which is pretty huge. Now they're going to back up. The upheaval to cover the retreat as well, and now going on to the melee racks. BKB is available, and a burn to come through. I think you back up if you're NP. They're TPing a couple heroes away already. Oh, man. Newbie. Rough stuff for them, huh? Crazy to think that at one point, SCCC was like doubling the net worth of any hero in the game. And now it's kind of to that stage where the Maldict on Envy is still kind of a problem. So if it, his BKB is seven seconds now, so he's not quite to like the five second BKB where, where it starts to become really annoying to be a core player. But he still has, you know, one or two BKB charges left. But Maldix just crushes him in fights. Mm -hmm. Like, you take any damage, and that spell just chunks you. We saw what happened when he still had the Aegis, and he was trying to hit the rain tracks. He had the spell cast on him, and he just realized, oh, I'm just going to die anyway. I'm just going to hit the racks and just give it up. So that the next time we go in, if I BKB, I'll, I'll have everything up. Well, some big items coming out. The Shiva's Guard for... Queen of Pain, the AC was just picked up not too long ago for the Life Stealer. Now working on an MKB, which makes sense. Uh, I think they might just get this racked for little to no f fighting. I mean, again, there is an Aegis for Envy with, a, uh, excuse me, a BKB for Envy. 
I don't know. We'll see. Newbie's still sitting in the high ground. TP's from Fada to keep the bottom wave pushed in. Trying to get to a tier 1 tower. And now, it looks like MP will back off for a moment. And I don't know if they're going to go far, but they are going to back off. Well, keeping Newbie in the base is still a victory in itself, right? Because Mugi wants to get items. SCCC wants to get items. They were even sending Fata towards the bottom lane to even push in, get chip damage on the tier 1 in the off, uh, off lane. And then just make it so that all the lanes are pushing in all the time and that they can just sit up here and not lose economic benefit from it. Slight of his steering chains, S triple C still fine. Very slow siege to this top lane. I don't know if they're gonna be able to break this without another Roche. I mean, if they wanna sit here until it respawns, I guess that's always an option. They've already killed the shrine, so there's not really any chance of them getting backstabbed by like a TP smoke anchor or anything. So they're they're feeling pretty safe. I guess maybe at the end of the day they, they might decide that it's better to just go and claim the free tier one and tier two bottom. Because it may not be worth, you know, newbie defending that. Kaka needs to be careful. Buys a blank at the very least, but needs to maybe think about getting back home considering everybody from NP is moving to bottom lane. There's nobody top anymore. Kaka, you need to leave, buddy. Mm, that's not the right direction you need to go in. And you're dead. Yeah. Like Carapace does come out, but they dropped the sentry. Oh boy. They should be able to chase him down. Maybe not. Sentry dropped again. Impale to come through. That will hit onto Envy. They really want to take the shrine. And it. I guess Newbie thought about contesting for a moment, but decided better of it. And we'll head bottom and take the tier one instead. So again, it's such a weird game. I mean, it was pretty much almost a 10,000 net worth advantage for Newbie at one point before that Roshan, and it is gone now. I mean, it's it's 100% gone. Dude, they're going to be kicking themselves for that. If they lose this game, the Fatal Bonds on the Roshan in both engagements just ruined them. And not only that, but chasing the Enchantress? Yeah, that, that was... was the one that, that really owned them. That was rough. All right. Now newbie taking a page out of the uh, NP, NP handbook, and they're trying to push into this top lane, get some more space for the life stealer and for S Triple C. We have slowed the pace down considerably. I mean, it is slow. It's just a lot of farming, occasional push into the the creep waves, top and bottom. And again, we're waiting on that Roche, and we're gonna find out when it's gonna respawn here. And this will be the big fight. It is up in two minutes, so a pretty long duration in terms of when Roche will actually be up. Doesn't really benefit one team or the other, I would imagine. Usually it, it just depends on if someone's gonna finish a big item and the time that it would take for Roche to respawn otherwise. So Mookie's obviously way too far from MKB for it to matter. And I don't think Fata's gonna Well maybe he will get BKB by the time the fight breaks out. We'll see. Uh, but he's got cheese anyway. Is this a bait? They're jumping in. Sonic wave coming in. Can they bring him down the force away? Oh, they need a couple auto attacks. The Jeez. cheese is there. And now Kaka will fall. They get the bash up on the S triple C. He gets Golem down as well. Can he blink out in time? Cog push somehow makes it away, but now the remnant will finish him off. A double kill for Fata. The cheese is there. Beautiful fight. Great turnaround from MP. And that should lead them into this, uh, I guess, melee rack stop, or at least a quap buyback. Oh, man. That hood of defiance. You don't see that often on an ember, but my god, did it save his life there. And also the four step. That's pretty nuts. So is this a forced buyback on Queen? That's the real question. Because if you buy back now and Queen doesn't have buyback for Roche, that is some scary stuff. You need to be careful if you're NP. You can't go too far in here. Even if you want this buyback, I don't know if it's worth it to lose like a couple heroes. But they're going for it. You got to be careful. Wall was already dropped down. You will have to come through. And be trying to fight this BKB. will go. The hook shot is there as well. They found Moogie. He's in trouble. Disarmed. The time being, they cannot find the racks. Vacuum back into the wall. Time to leave. Impale will miss completely. They're going to look for MSS. They will find him. They had the uh, Orchid Malevolence on him. They will get one more kill at the very least. Can they find Fata? They certainly cannot. He TP's away. The Impale not in time. On cooldown for another two seconds. AUI 2000 might go down. Shadow Strike. There's going to be the Orchid coming through. Yes, S Triple C did have to buy back, but he does get a double kill at the very least off of it. So there they can, And again, they keep their melee racks alive too. And now maybe the, the big problem though is that newbie are going to be here and this thing is up in 10 seconds so that is two heroes without buyback so np losing those heroes and not having the capability of buying out could cost them here 
Wow. It just depends on how quickly newbies scout at being alive. Mm, send that bird in there. No. Nope. They're going to look for more elsewhere. Like, if they see it up, they just immediately run to the pit. But they just passed there. it, and they just thought it was... Oh, my. They're not going to know it's up. Well, they have an invis, and Kaka's vendetta, so if they get a pick, it might still be enough. Can they even kill Envy? He's BKB. They found oh, Kaka they walks into oh, the sentry. God. He does get forced to the low ground. Here comes the remnant, though, and he's potentially in some trouble. This is problematic. I believe he is dead. Yeah. Oh, he's mega dead already. And guess what? Roche is up. Hook shot coming through. They will find Faith again as well. He's going to get dropped just like that. They don't notice Roshan was up. Uh, I mean, they, they probably know what's up now. But there's they a DD they on the Queen. There. There's a DD on the Queen. This could be... Ooh, this could still be something that they try to know. fight. I don't know. This, I mean, it's risky, but the alternative is giving away another Aegis and Cheese to NP. Like it looks like that might happen. Yeah, looks like they're just not going to fight it. Man, again, for the third time in a row, Newbie cannot find Roshan. This time it is not anything to do with Pile I Die, but almost certainly this will turn into a full set of racks top and perhaps even more. If they kill us, Triple C, it's probably game. Or close to it. I guess Moogie does maybe have buyback. Not to be yet, fair, though. all they had to do was walk one. They had their whole team there, Mott. They had their whole team there. All they had to do was walk one hero, and they could have sent the courier into the pit, they and they would have twice. gotten a roach. They did twice, but they didn't do it when it came up. They just assumed it was still down. So maybe in a newbie getting a little bit flustered and MP taking advantage. Huge stuff for MP trying to finish this game off. Forcing it to a game five would be absolutely gigantic, and it still feels like newbies still have a chance. Well, not, not a great one. They still do have a chance. But again, if MP keep playing the way they have been, they should be able to find at least this top set of racks. Almost to that uh, five second BKB territory on the troll. That's kind of another well. turning point in the game, right? I mean, the five second BKB means that you can be maledicted. And we've seen how powerful that spell can be with the, the burst damage that you have behind them. So even though there's an Aegis on NB and there's a good chance that they're going to be able to get this racks, are they going to be able to really deal a fatal blow to newbie with what they have? I, they just got the Satanic on the troll, too. So he's got yet another life to work with. Yeah, that's going to help a lot, actually. Jeez, he's got 3,200 health. Mm-hmm. Envy has caught up spectacularly. And they're going to try to finish this game off. Moving into the base. Here we go. KP on the front lines. He's got wall. Will he drop it? Envy just walks up and pale misses again from Kaka. They will get off the cask, and he's still just going to go to work on the racks. Jump in, Kaka will find Fata. They will break the Lincoln Sphere. Wall drop down on the back end. They go for a play, but now the Kaka come out from MSS. They drop the Golem. They do blink away, but the Disarm was there for S-Triple-C. They've already had to buy back on KP. Now MV kiting everybody, including Mugi, who now has to back up. 40 seconds for Faith on the back lines. Good back wall, and Pale to follow up as well. On to one. Jumping in, S-Triple-C still has the Sonic Wave. The Disarm will come through. Can they take KP down for a second time? The Sonic Wave will come in, but again, the Aegis and Satanic both up. They're going to come in. They're going to try to fight this. They'll get AUI 2000 as well as Pilot Dai Fata. Forced to cheese. Can they bring Envy down? The appeal comes through. He's low. They cannot quite get him, though. Now backing away. It's just, just, still just the Aegis, though, if they can bring him down, but it's not quite there. He's able to get out. Plenty of Maelstrom procs, from, uh, procs flying through. So I guess they're able to survive. Newbie hold again somehow. Dude, that was so well played by Newbie. They get the, the infest bomb, like after the fight already kicks off, they blink onto the back and they just annihilate the Enchantress and the Warlock. Because I, I don't know if his Hurricane Pike was down or whatever, but Aoi just freaking fell over. So they lose their back line at that point. Golem had already been expended. The vac wall into the revac was nice, even though you know, Darkseer obviously had to buy back for that. Still a very solid hold. Yeah, but again, it's one of many, I feel like, that they need to make in the future. As you can already see. Well, the later the game goes, in. it's only a 6k net worth lead, right? So it, it just really depends on how the teams take the fight. If newbie are able to get an engagement where they get in and they, like, insta-kill the Warlock and there's no, no Golem or they insta-kill the Enchantress or whatever, and they're basically fighting a person up, it can easily be turned. And then you can just deal with the troll by outnumbering him. The problem stems from when the troll has his entire team behind him, because then you just can't kill him. We saw Envy didn't even lose the Aegis, right? Mm -hmm. He's just super damn tanky, can't well, hit him. So you got to kind of kill everyone else. The good thing is they do have the MKB now up for um, 
Moogie. Cask will come through. Again, he still has Aegis. Searing Chain Spot Carapace coming out. They really want this Melee Rex to stay alive. The constant pressure from MP might turn this into a building finally. Open Wood's coming in, the Impale. Hook shut the fall from MSS. There's the wall drop down as well. They need this kill onto Envy and they will drop him. It's just one though. Now can they get MSS? Sonic Wave comes out. Beautifully done. Remnant away from Fada. He can't stay to fight. And now Envy has to pop the BKB and run. It is a five second BKB duration. He needs to get out. Here comes Kaka. He needs to find this Impale. The Rolling Axe is a Spike Carapace coming through. Where's the Impale? Why didn't he get stunned? Envy now turning up. Pilot Eyes nearby as well. Shadow Strike coming through. They're going to blow up one. Potentially AUI getting chased down. Envy stunned up now. Getting caught. Maladic is up and here comes Moogie trying to man fight the Shiva's guard he needs to hit it and he will and Envy is gonna get dropped down newbie turn it around they hold the building yet again Fats is still there they won't be able to grab him but again the big target is Envy dropped once more finally a big fight for newbie it could have gone a lot better though I think I'm not hundred percent but I'm pretty sure that he got hit by the axes and then care paced after Yes. I don't know. That's exactly I, what I'm happened. pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he just didn't do it fast enough. If he had hit him with that and they got the impale afterwards, I'm pretty sure he doesn't die. And then I'm pretty sure Faith doesn't die. And that fight looks really ugly because Envy did not have BKB at that point and they would have just gotten completely steamrolled. So even though it still looks bad for NP, that could have been a hell of a lot worse if uh, Kaka had properly used his, uh, his E skill. But yeah, I mean, it's still another base defense. It's still more time. We're going to probably see another Roshan fight, I would assume. Yeah. And it, we're starting to see, like, the big issue, right? If the troll can't sit in the front line and just hit stuff, it's really problematic. And that's that's why we, we always come back to the same thing. It's like when you have your long-duration BKBs, that's when you need to deal substantial damage to the base or, or what have you because the later it goes, Nyx is a monster late-game hero. Yeah. He's crazy good. He's gonna and then have you a, have uh, Yules too. I thought it might even be if Faith, but... yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I guess it is Yules, but if Faith does get uh, a Maldict off on a hero, if you don't BKB, you're just dead. Dude, it's so good. It's so insanely good. And now they'll have a Lotus Orb coming in from KP. The late game items are starting to accrue for both teams. Ah, man, MP, it looks like they had it for a moment there. And, and the thing that you mentioned that is, I think, the most important thing is, is going to be the five-second BKB duration for Troll because clearly he just cannot survive the lockdown. Uh, even his team coming with, like, a hook shot and a golem drop down, it's just not enough as it is right now. They need more. AUI 2000's damage has not been really considerable, I would say, in this game, as it usually is on his hero. So, yeah, like He just hasn't had much farm. That's the thing, like... This, this isn't a hero that can stay out on the map against a Nyx and a Lifestealer. So that's how they, they keep Aoi down. They have these two heroes that, in conjunction, will just kill the enchant if she's anywhere away from her team, ever. So she can't split farm. It needs to be Fatha, it needs to be Envy. This could and because be of that, huge, by the way. Look at this. Oh position. yeah, they're smoked up. Yeah. Here we go. Kaka, they're gonna find Envy. Impale, he gets it off. Can oh, they God. find this kill? Wall drop down, the golem will keep him alive. He will have Satanic or Pop BKB. Sonic Wave coming out, a lot of damage. Nobody dead yet, Fata low as well. Kaka might fall. Can they get anybody out of this for newbie? SCC, they're turning on Envy. He's already popped the Satanic. Moogie coming in, the upheaval is owning. Here comes AUI 2000, they drop two. And now Moogie's gonna try to man fight. Envy's low, the Glimmer Cave comes in. They need more damage and they cannot find him. Moogie chasing after AUI, gets the bash off at the very least with the MKB. Can he find this kill? At least one it is. Meanwhile, on the other side, MSS is going to get dropped. The gem is dropped down. That's pretty big for KP. It'll be a two-for-two two trade. And uh, Golem is now down, though, for NP. Something to keep in mind. That could have been... Uh, if, if they were able to drop Envy in that like initial engagement, that would have been huge. But really fast reactions from NP. Like, the four staff was almost immediate. They get the Chaotic Offering, stun on three. That's like their disengage. And sure, they lose the Enchantress. They lose MSS, but, you know, it, it doesn't really... In the grand scheme of things, if you're not going to be able to take an objective after that, those heroes don't really contribute much anyway. So it's basically just support for support trade. And then all the other cores just go back to farming. So all in all, I think it was a slight advantage for newbie, I suppose, just given the heroes that were traded and their their respective net worths because faith ain't worth nothing right now that no, boy that boy's really. poor yeah um the one hero we haven't talked about by the way is fought on the ember spirit and kind of how he's really been unkillable the past like 20 minutes i don't think he's died 
in that period of time. The Lincoln Spear is really helping out the Solar Crest as well. By the way, Roche, another long respawn duration, which again will help NP in this regard. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This game Dude, is it's such nuts. a scary game. You got to give credit to NP though, right? Because yeah. the, this is their tournament life on the line. You know, yep. newbie could afford to lose this game, even though obviously they don't. They they don't want to lose, but if they did, then it's still they got one more game to come back. If NP lose here, it's just it's over. Right. It's uh, not an easy task for MP. I mean, we saw they've banged their head against that wall up top for the longest time. They still cannot quite find it. However, a smoke will come out. If MP can catch somebody with their pants down, it would be huge for them to get into Roshan. But I would imagine newbie should know this is going on, or at least have an understanding. As Triple C does have the life stealer inside of him, but he is a little bit alone. Flare coming in. There's the hook shot. As Triple C, the cog push. He will blink away. The remnant not there in time, and no golem follow up stun. 13 seconds. That is huge. Golem is back up in 13. And now Roshan still not up for 56 seconds. And they might find Fata. Lincoln Sphere is broken, but that's it for now. Can't find anything else. Okay. Here we go. This Rosh fight is going to be the most tense thing. Can NP get another Aegis and Cheese? They will see that it's not up. Sled of Fistner and Chains Faith is like, please, God, no. Golem drop down onto Kaka. That's not great. Shiva's guard in the back lines. They are looking for Pylai Dai. He is Glimmer Caped. And he will make it out. Now Envy heading inside the Rose Pit. Pylai Dai going to get dropped. Mugi will get the kill. On the other side of the fight, Faith, well, he's dead. But again, not that big of a deal. Sonic Wave coming out. They grab MSS. Now the BKB going for Envy. He's got to run. The Golem is down. S Triple C chasing him down. Blink four, Vacuum misses, he's so fast. Kaka cannot find him, Faith will buy back. They need to take this Roshan. No fatal bonds, Draskal, okay? It's not up. Yeah, but look at bottom lane. Fata's going ham here. That, oh, he really is. Get out of there, Faith, don't die back. Voter restoration in the shrine, can he get there? It's too late, and then he remnants away. This space creation is nuts, NP. They are not giving in. They do not want to give this Roshan up. Again, no Golem, but Fatal Bonds will be up in 10. Envy is heading right into the pit. They have to defend top two. This Melee Rex is about to fall. Newbie, I don't think they can get this one now. I don't know. It's, it's not going as quickly as they would like. Sheba's got to come through. As Triple, as Triple C is going to walk in and decides against it and says, okay, well, they're backing up now. Fata TPing in, though. Kaka has to Vendetta. They're going to get the Melee Rex. Oh, my God. He gets the full Rex. Fata is taking over this game all of a sudden. Oi. It, they're just all over the map all the time. They're even they're going back into the Roshan pit. I mean, KP's going over here, but he's all by himself. I, I don't alone. know what he thinks he can do here. Uh, yeah, this is uh, not good. It's not done yet. He's Battle even got Trance. a gem. He's gonna he's walk so in. He's so brave. Oh, but he pushes him out. But again, the problem yeah, is bottom. He, he yeah, yeah, yeah. He... Well, they have Kaka here, so that oh, might be enough. This is problematic. Tier 3 tower getting assaulted by Fata. Does a lot of damage. He's going to remnant it away. And now KP will go back into the pit. Whirling Axes will miss. Oh, the split push is real. NP doing everything to force this to game 5. They get off the route to hook shot. As Triple C, the cock push. But there's the vacuum wall. They need the Sonic Wave. They need the ultimate. It's turning into a slideshow. Envy and Mugi are man fighting. There's the Sonic Wave. Can they get this kill? Another perfect liver cape coming out from Pile I Die. Can they find anything else? Everybody is low. They might find MSS, but that is going to be it. They will get the infest out to get the kill. The shrine, is it available? It is. Envy now back up almost to full HP. Fata dealing with mid. MSS will buy back. They've got to take this. They gotta do it soon. No hook shot for six seconds. And they will get the Aegis and Cheese. Finally, newbie have done it at the very least. That's one objective down. Plenty to go. This game is intense, dude. I don't know how much more of this I can handle. This is like. It's like NP are winning the game. Are they throwing the game? Are they winning the game? I can't. I can't deal with this squad. I don't. Time. <laughs> you think I can? I don't know what's happening. It's 56 minutes in. What's oh, going on? I mean, the, the age is going the way it's like they, they have top lane completely dead. So that lane's going to be pushing in all the time. Now it's about buying time, right? Just keep the lanes pushed out as much as you can. You really only have to primarily worry about mid and bottom, I guess, if you're MP. 
So just have Vata keep doing what he was doing, you know, push the lane all the way to the tower. I'm sure there's no Roshan to contest anymore, so it'll probably be more likely the newbie are going to be out about on the map. But you need to try to stop them from five manning your base, because that's the point in the game where you, you start to really risk um, giving, uh, giving up a lot. My concern for newbie is can they ever kill Fata? This guy's owning. He's got a BKB now. Wicked Sphere. And I think they uh, just really, they don't really have to kill Fata. They just need to kill either Envy or I guess, you could probably get away with just killing the Warlock and the Ench like they have been. Because typically what happens is, you know, S triple, tri uh, S triple C blinks into the back of the fight and they just look for those heroes. That's why Pylai dies like forced into this Glimmer Cape. Otherwise oh, he just explodes. This is like a four versus four. Where is S triple C? He's keeping into the mid lane. Oh, hello AUI2000. Yes, I would like to kill you. No, apparently not. They're going bottom instead. Oh, God. Envy Impale. They can bring him down here. The hookshot coming through. They get forced away. Now he pops the BKB. He needs the Satanic, and he's doing some work. Golem drop down. MSS now turning on. Getting, of course, Moogie absolutely right-clicking him down, trying to get this kill. The Remnant coming through. And they will get MSS, but they've lost two. Both supports dead yet again. The upheaval is owning the Yule Scepter. Lincoln Sphere is broken. Now remnant it away. Trying to find S Triple C and they will get the kill. All of a sudden turning it around. Moogie is here alone trying to man fight this. There's the Shadow Word. MV now getting chased down. But instead, it's AUI 2000 on the back lines. They want Fada. They can't get it. The cheese goes. Moogie still trying to man fight. It's not going to work. The vacuum onto oh! the high ground. But the remnant to the low ground. That's just Aegis. And now S Triple C as well as the Light Stealer, the only two alive. AUI 2000 is still up there. He's got Hurricane Pike. He can get down in some uh, period of time. Now the Orca coming through. They need Envy another Glimmer Cape. And now Envy thinking about going back in. Newbie in some trouble. They've got to back away. And they will have buyback for KP. And the rest of the supports are up in 16. And MP do it again. Another good fight. Dude, MSS has been like the savior of Envy this game. Like it's without eggs, by the way. Just want to throw that out. Every there. yeah, yeah. Every single time that NB gets caught, MSS immediately hooks to him and forces him away. Like it's just you can't really afford to go all in on him like that unless you know for a fact that you're gonna have like the the numbers advantage. Because every single time they do it, it just doesn't seem to to really go their way. <sighs> okay, NP, can you really do this? They are going for a moon shard for Envy. He will have, uh, he's 3,000 surplus, so he doesn't quite have enough for it, and buy that. <clears throat> Fata getting turned on, but he is able to get out. Remnants away. And the problem is, uh, he kind of needed an Abyssal Blade for Mugi <laughs> in order to lock some of these heroes down. The problem with the Abyssal Blade is, like, if you, if you buy that, do you have enough damage? Like, he has Heart on his quick buy, but I'm kind of wondering, like, yeah, Heart's going to make you crazy tanky in the fights. And I guess, you know, to a certain degree, there's no MKB up on the troll, so going for, like, flat, effective health, it could be pretty good. I'm just, like, thinking if there's a better option. I mean, Abyssal would be great for, you know, BKB he, disable, yeah, he stopping turned, he's, him. He's going to the Abyssal now. He turned his, uh, his item choice. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's, it's probably the best in regards to ensuring that NB isn't able to get away. And right. then maybe potentially they sell the uh, the Veil on Queen and then get something like uh, a Hex. But then again, Veil is like crazy good with Maledict on your team. Jeez, that, that stuff hits super hard. I don't know where you go in terms of itemization for like half these heroes, but... I don't know. It's it's getting to this point where it's 60 minutes in. We're probably going to wait for another Roshan because Aegis and Cheese are down again. They were just used. Um, three minutes before... We'll see when Roshi's going to respawn. Okay. Maybe they're going to try to fight this. Look at this. Up front is going to be Kaka. He's going to find Envy. Envy doesn't see him. Kaka has the gem. Will they try to fight this? They know that everybody is up here. They will come through. It's kind of a bait. Newbie know it. They'll back up. They'll be smart about it. And MP will have to slow roll it again. You still with me, Draskal? Yeah, I'm I'm just like I'm intently watching the game lot. Fair enough. I think everybody's doing that. It's a very like high stress situation for both teams, you know. It's it's a sixty minute game, so usually when you get to this stage it's like one team fight can make or break it, you know, one person doesn't have buyback or 
you get a really big pickoff, and then you force them into buying back, and then you can do something else. It's like it's a very uh, tactical stage in the game. Fortunately for teams like NP and Newbie, they're both very experienced, so they have uh, a multitude of that to draw from. Yeah, I mean, we're right now on the verge of a game five, looking in, and at least in terms of momentum and like how the map control has been. Uh, MP are very close to maybe getting a second set of racks with one more team fight, forcing this fifth game. Newbie, of course, they had the advantage earlier on. They kind of threw it away in some of the Roche fights. And uh, have since tried to regain it. They got the last Roshan with Aegis and Cheese and lost it pretty much immediately afterwards. And they want to finish this off because they are currently up 2-1 to one in game four. Looking to finish this off and take home Zotac. But, I mean, at this point... It's anybody's game, and once more, we're probably waiting for that Roshan. That's really what it comes down to. I just don't see... I wonder, yeah. I mean, clearly, it's it's going to be another Rosh fight, I would assume. Unless one team... There, there is a possibility that one of them smoke before Roshan spawns, like as a, either a posturing smoke or to get better ward vision, or even just to try to go for the pick. Because there's no uh, no shrines up for, for newbie. So I think if anyone were to do that, it would probably be NP. And then just get the positional advantage that way. Envy's a little alone. Okay, Envy. He is going to be KB, though. And they're going to try to turn into Kako. Forces himself away. Golem misses, except for onto KP. That's not great. But uh, neither are the end of the world either. So. Okay. Dead. Uh, no Golem for 159 seconds. And. Uh, well, we'll see if they can take advantage. They actually see Envy, and Pale is going to hit. Can they find this? They need the cast to fly up as well, and it will bounce. SCC is going to come through. They don't have BKB. Here's the Orchid. The Yule Scepter to come in. They're going to come through. Hookshot misses from MSS, but the Force away. Now they're looking for the back wall. They'll find it. Can they get the Impale off as well? He will. And now they're going to come in. Scream of Pain. Shiva's Guard, Sonic Wave. They blow everybody away. MSS is dead for 80. They do have buyback available for Envy. Oh, no. It's all coming apart. NP, that's that's rough, but that's not the end of the world yet. Well, let's see. How long on Roche? I guess we're gonna find out here in a second. Yeah, it's okay. So I'm it's a, oh, it's a long. What are these respawn. Roche respawn oh times? My God, it's so long. What is happening? Okay, well, I mean, newbie can push out the lanes at least. It's unfortunate that they didn't get a quick spawn, but dude, at I don't the think very we've least, had a quick they're, spawn they're, the entire game. Yeah, I think every time it's been two minutes or more. But yeah, that, that really does hurt Newbie. If they had been a little bit more fortunate in that timing, they could have potentially just gotten Roche like right now, walked down mid, forced the buyback. Well, they might still try to do that. Yeah, it looks they like they're going to. They might still try to, to force the buyout. Newbie yeah. are going to head up to the high ground, and here comes Moogie. I will say, though, if it does turn into another Roche fight, it will certainly make things exciting again. Here we go. Buyback coming in. Kaka in deep, looking for that Impale. They will get forced back. They cannot take that full set of racks and trade. Kind of even things up. It's unfortunate, not capable. Fata close by, but they won't spot him. A DD outside of Roche, but again, we are still waiting another minute 40. Basher now done for the Lifestealer, along with the 3600 he still has. Of course, he needs a little bit more for buyback. And of course, the Abyssal on top of it. All right. Yeah, I was, so, was going to ask earlier if, like, if it's potentially worth not having buyback to finish the Abyssal for the Roshan fight, but man, that is risky. It is That's so like risky. super, super all in. I will say they they're having a tough time bringing Moogie down. I mean, he hasn't really died that much. I mean, he's only got two deaths in this entire game, which is kind of surprising. I don't think he's really Holy, died much. He's in the only game. died twice. Yeah, I know, right? It's insane. I mean, I guess Fatha's only died three times. So, yeah. I mean, I, I guess it's more just like when the fights break out and you see a lot of kills. It's usually just like supports dying. And oh, it's every like time. the core is just walking away from the fight. Yeah. It's like, without fail, it's like Faith and Kaka and then MSS dying. And sometimes Pile I Die, but his Glimmer Capes have been on point. Do they have, like, more than one Glimmer Cape? I'm pretty sure it's just been Pile I Die. Which, by the way, is insane. His Glimmer Capes have been on point, I want to point out. Yeah, it's really frustrating when fights are really disjointed in the late game for cores because they don't carry detection most of the time. And that makes it so those items, like Glimmer, just do so much. Here we go. Fata, Chief's Guard, running away, trying to man fight. Here we go. The Golem dropped down as well. Wall is there. Moogie trying to man fight. Open Moon's Envy getting chewed down. The Impetus Sonic Wave. Impale! Is this going to be a dieback? He's so low. They need to bring him down. He's not dead yet. One more auto attack, and he will finally drop. Pilot die in the back lines. S Triple C going to work. He is in some trouble. A couple more auto attacks will do the job. And now the second golem dropped down, of course, on the death. 
He will buy back for Fata as he also goes down now. The top lane getting pushed in. As you can see, the wave being pinged out by Faith. And they need to maybe think about backing up now and defending their tier 4 towers. That's exactly what they're going to do with KP. 86 seconds without Eternal Envy. And here we go. Nubia are pushing up to the high ground looking for this tier 3 tower. See if they can't get it. All right. Could this be it finally, Draskal? MP, they've tried so hard. They can't quite get it done, perhaps. One Rax will be taken. The amount of damage they do to these buildings is absurd. Fata is actually in the base on the opposite side. KP trying to chase him down. Fata has to leave. He cannot deal with this. Now Rax's bottom will go as well. Roche is still up. Aegis and Cheese still both available. Now the Abyssal done for Mugi, along with Buyback still available. Can they get top? There's a tier two there. So at least they won't lose Megas. Like it's fear breaking. Fata getting stunned up, getting forced away as well. And now Nubi will make the smart play and back up. Can they get to Roche? What can they do here? Hmm. I mean, Envy's still dead for like 30 seconds. To be honest, if even if Nubi were to walk to the pit right now, they would probably still be able to kill Roshan faster than Envy's alive and is able to get there. Granted, they do have a shrine, so maybe. I don't know, that one pick, I'm pretty sure when they found him, they had that one really weird cliff ward that saw the medium camp and him farming it. Yep. And that's that they exactly. also knew was, that his BKB, it was, his BKB was down. It was this ward right here or something like that, I think. I pinged it like a million yeah. times. That, that set everything in motion. That ward, literally game-winning ball. It, yeah, I mean, it really was. Oh, man. If, if NP go on to lose this game, Envy's going to have to feel heartbroken. They came so close, but it's not over yet. Roche will go down, and uh, there's no way NP can contest. You can see they're back at the base towards the tier 2 towers where they used to be anyway. Age will be picked up for C, uh, S, excuse me, S, triple C. And uh, I'm assuming the cheese is picked up for the Life Stealer. It sure is. And here we go. They're going to try to take the tier 2 tower top, I would imagine. I'll try to finish off this game. But NP have got one good fight left in them. Buyback status is not looking great. They only have MSS with it. And uh, he won't really do much. Short of everybody else being alive. So NP so close to forcing this fifth game. Can they turn it around? It would be a miraculous comeback at this point. And it's going to have to be a, a big team fight for them. 68 minutes into the game, Draskal and Newbie. Are they actually going to win this one? It feels kind of like that's going to happen. I don't know. I Like, without buybacks and stuff, they're going to try to go for a surprise play, I guess. They're smoked up behind the tower. I thought that they would try to, like, go in there because, you know, Newbie probably don't expect you to defend that tower, right? They're yeah. probably like, ah, oh, they're just sitting in the base or whatever. It's, it's kind of risky. It, sometimes it can be advantageous to take a fight when you defend something that's not worth it and just hope that the element of surprise gives you an advantage, but they also didn't really have any vision, so... They got the high ground wards down at least. They got the sentries, but there is a gem carrier, so all this stuff's just gonna get poked down. And here we go. This is the make or break. It sure is. <laughs> no creep wave here. The cog push kind of annoying movie. They're gonna try to fight this. BKB pop from Envy needs to be careful. Oh, they're trying to lock down Moogie, but he's so tanky. Hook shot. Actually hits under three. Cogs will find Kaka. Remnant in. They're doing some good work. They dropped the golem as well. Looking on the back lines, trying to find Envy. Man fight. There's the Abyssal. The Glimmer Cape again from Pilot Eye once more. Nobody dead yet on the side of Newbie. Now Moogie trying to leave. He does not have his cheese. He's already used it. SCCC throwing up the Sonic Wave. Here we go. The Cog push from MSS keeping it in. As Triple C trying to man fight. Now trying to blink as well. Brute, the Hex. Can they bring him down? That's just the Aegis. And now they'll find MSS. But he is the one with buyback. He's got it. And he'll use it. Nobody dead yet other than him. Everybody else backing up all of these abilities being used and only one hero dead. You've got to be kidding. That was... All the heroes are so tanky. The ones who typically die in the fights are the supports, right? But in this situation, the supports are both sitting behind all the cores. And the supports of NP are inside their base. So this is like the first real five-man defense we've seen from NP this whole game. So like Pylai Dai and Aoi are able to just do whatever they want. You know, they sit behind the tier 3 tower. He's just throwing impetus, and then Pi gets like a free upheaval channel and some fatal bonds. Orchid, and V getting a little bit. Uh, he's fine. Still going to work. BKB pops again. Moogie trying to leave now. BKB is down. They've taken the tier three tower. We'll see if newbie want to reset. They'd still have all. They've lost their ages and cheese, by the way. So 
you know, they're going in. They they have buyback on everybody except for the Nyx Assassin. They're going to try to do this. Envy's still going to work. Not much mana left. The Bash will come through, and they get the vacuum back. Now in trouble is Fata and MSS. Can they bring him down? Envy is dead, and now it's up to Fata as MSS will also fall. Golem dropped on death of Pile I Die. As Triple C taking some impetus hits from AUI 2000, but he's out of mana. They're pushed back into the well. The Searing Chains will come through, but the racks should be finished off. Remnant Fata trying to man fight as Triple C might be in trouble. Blinks away. The wall dropped down. Can they kill Fata? He's getting low, but now the hex up. That'll be into Kaka. He's low. Impale does hit. They need this kill. The Cogs. Excuse me. The cast coming in along with the Shiva's guard. Fata will drop dead for 123. That should be it. Newbie. They will be your Zotac Cup Masters champions. Very well deserved from Newbie as well. I mean, you you can't really take anything away from MP. I think they played considering again. It's a pretty new team, right? So this is their 